So last time we proved the factor remainder theorem, which said that for any polynomial of nth degree p sub n of x, uh, we can express p sub n of x as q of x, where q is some unique polynomial, multiplied by x minus k plus r, where r is a unique real number. And this can be done for any k. It doesn't matter what k is, this can always be done. And only in one way, in a unique uh, way. And Today we're going to try to prove uh, Vieta's theorem. So before we prove Vieta's theorem, uh, we need to prove an important result about polynomials, which will extend uh, quite naturally from the factor remainder theorem. And it also has a nice analog um, in, in in the natural numbers. Okay, so this next theorem basically says that if you have a polynomial p sub n of x with roots r sub 1, r sub 2, all the way to r sub n, then, uh, no, sorry, also, you can express p sub n of x like this. where a sub n is not zero, this is a polynomial of nth degree, then you can also express p sub n of x <coughs> excuse me, as a sub n into x minus r sub 1 multiplied by x minus r sub 2 multiplied by x minus r sub 3 all the way to x minus r sub n. And this is also a fact. Okay, so why does this look, uh, why does this seem an, an, like analogous um, to something to do with the natural numbers? Well, there's something called the fundamental theorem. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And Basically what it says is, for any natural number, so for any natural number, um, let's say p, sorry, p is a bad choice, um, n, n can be expressed as a unique so there's only one way to express it as a unique product of prime numbers. <coughs> and that's ignoring what's called multiplicity. So, for example, uh, 60 is equal to uh, 3 times 2 times 2 times 5 which is equal to 3 times 2 squared times 5. Uh, this is the same thing. Okay, so 3 times 2 times 2 and 3 times 2 squared are the same thing. All right, so ignoring multiplicities, uh, all natural numbers can be written as unique product of primes. Now, why does this seem similar to uh, this thing I've just written? Well, if you consider these these monic polynomials over here, prime numbers. Actually, don't consider them prime numbers. Consider them prime factors, or maybe something like irreducible factors. So factors that cannot be reduced further, irreducible factors. Then this seems to almost look like the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And the two are actually very similar. So that's some uh, intuition you can possibly use in understanding the theorem. So you think of these just as, as the prime factors of this polynomial. And so there's only one way to write them. We can write them as a product of prime factors. This even uh, There's even some uh, further analogy to be made about the multiplicities. Because you can also write p sub n of x uh, like that. And... Uh, so, so the theorem still holds. <coughs> Sorry. 
well, actually, for that, that would, this would have to be a, sorry, an n plus 1 degree polynomial. But anyway, that's besides the point. So let's try proving this. Earlier, we proved the factor remainder theorem, where we said p sub n of x can be written as x minus k into q of x plus r, where q of x is unique and r is unique, and this can be done for any real number k. Well, if r1 is a root of p sub n, then p sub n of r1 is 0, right? By definition, that's true. But we know by the factor remainder theorem, we can write p sub n of x as x minus r1 into q of x plus r. I've realized how bad this choice of r is for notation. So p sub n of r1 is equal to r1 minus r1 into q of x plus r, which means that r is actually also 0. But that means that p sub n of x can just be written as x minus r1 into q of x, because this r is actually 0. All right. <coughs> now let's say r2 is also a root. Let's say r2 is also a root of p sub n. Well, then p sub n r2 is equal to 0. But if p sub n could be written like this, and that's also equal to r2 minus r1 into q of x. Now, assuming r2 is not equal to r1, this is not 0. Whoops, not q of x. I meant q of r2. And assuming, again, assuming r2 is not r1, this is not 0. But that means if this whole thing is 0, q of r2 is 0. Now again, applying the factor remainder theorem, q of x is a polynomial, and if r2 is a root of q of x, q of x can be written as x minus r2 into something else. Let's call it, uh, let's say, q2 of x. But that means p sub n of x, which is equal to x minus r1 into q of x, can actually be written as x minus r1 into x minus r2 into q2 of x. And you can see that if p of n has n roots, then we can keep doing this. And this will continue for uh, this will continue until we reach x minus r sub n. So p sub n of x can be written as x minus r1 into x minus r2 into x minus r3. Just repeating the process I showed you earlier. This can be done and continued until x minus r sub n. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we have some other factor out. But we don't know what to do with this factor. Let's deal with it now. So p sub n of x, let's say it looks like this, a sub n, x to the power n, plus a sub n minus 1, x to the power n minus 1, all the way to a sub 1, x plus a sub 0. So let's see what q sub n of x could be. Well, first of all, q sub n of x cannot be, cannot be, of degree 1 or higher. And the answer to why this is true is uh, not that difficult. It's because if, if it was, then p sub n of x wouldn't be a polynomial of nth degree. For example, if q sub n of x was x, then p sub n of x would be a polynomial of n plus 1th degree. And that's not possible. So q sub n of x has to be a constant. So it's just some number, some real number. Okay? So what real number could it be? And this is not difficult either. Actually, it has to be a sub n. Because if it was anything else, these two expressions wouldn't be the same. Say it was a sub n plus 1, then over here, when we expand everything out, we would have a sub n plus 1 x to the power n term which we clearly don't have here. So that's not possible. The, the only possible thing q sub n of x could be is a sub n. Okay, now let's get to Vieta's theorem. How does this justify Vieta's theorem? Well, Vieta's theorem is, well, at least in the IB syllabus, is about the sum 
and product of the roots of a polynomial. And it's actually quite simple from here. It's, it's very simple to derive. So suppose p sub n of x is equal to a sub n of x to the power n plus a sub n minus 1 to x to the power n minus 1 all the way to a sub 1 of x plus a sub 0 and it has n roots r1, r2 all the way to rn <coughs> which means we've just proved that it can be written like this. Okay, so these two expressions are equivalent. Well, let's look just at this expression over here. Well, let's try to create the uh, x to the power um, n minus one term. Okay, so the way we do that when we're, when we're multiplying out tons of brackets is we essentially want to choose n minus one x's, which means we want to choose x's from n minus one of these of these brackets. Okay. And from the remaining bracket we choose a constant term. So say I choose an x here, an x here, and I keep choosing an x's x's um, up till the n minus one bracket, then I have to choose a constant term here. So with that combination I get a sub n, which is out, into um, negative r sub n x to the power n minus 1. But I could have not chosen x's from any one of these n brackets. That includes this, that includes this, all of them. So in total when I sum everything up I'll get a sub n into negative r1 minus r2 minus r3 all the way to minus <coughs> sorry rn into x to the n minus 1. And that's how my term is going to look. But that has to be equivalent to the coefficient of the x to the n minus 1th term over here. So if I equate those expressions, we get something interesting. We get a sub n into negative 1 into the sum of all my roots is equal to a sub n minus 1, which means the sum of all my roots is equal to negative a sub n minus 1 over a sub n. And that's one of the things you need to know um, for, about, about Vieta's theorem. That the sum of the roots is equal to the leading, uh, the, the second leading coefficient, <coughs> sorry, divided by the leading coefficient multiplied by negative 1. And so that, that's the theorem about the sum of all the roots of a polynomial. Now the product of the roots of all the polynomial is, is very similar, and we're going to use a similar approach um, to work with it. I'm sorry, this video is actually going over time. Last video I said this video would only be 8 minutes, so I was wrong about that. Again, remember, this is equal to a sub n, x minus r1, x minus r2, all the way to x minus r sub n. So how do we, <coughs> how do we create a constant term on the right? Well, to create a constant term, we choose no x's from any of these brackets, which means we can only choose constant terms from all these baskets. Uh, sorry, I keep saying baskets, uh, brackets. There's only one way to do that, and so our constant term is simply a sub n into negative r1 into negative r2 all the way to negative rn. And that's got to equal the constant term on the expression um, in the expression on the left, which is equal to a sub zero. Which means that negative one to the power n into the product, this capital pi, you can just read as product, product of all the roots is equal to a sub zero over a sub n. And that's uh Vieta's uh theorem about the product of all the roots. Uh, you can also just bring the negative one uh, to this side, which uh, makes it read makes it read the product of all the roots is equal to a zero over a n a sub zero over a sub n is negative one to the power n. Thanks for watching.